In this video, we will talk about velocity and acceleration for rigid bodies under pure rotation. So if we have, let's say, a beam, and this beam is doing a pure rotation about point O, so let me write that, pure rotation. And it's rotating, so let's focus on a particular point P, okay? And this point P is going to be traversing a circular path as this rotates with O as the center, right? So if it is allowed to do a full 360 degree rotation, that would be the path that you would see with O as the center. So let's say the distance from O to P is given to us as R, okay? We know what that distance R is. So now the question is, what can we say about the velocity of this point P, okay? So first of all, we know that the point P is traveling along this path, so at this particular point, its velocity, depending on less, this is rotating in the clockwise direction, would be actually tangent to this path. Now remember, velocity of a point is always tangent to the path it moves. Okay, whether it's a straight line path or whether it's a curved path, it doesn't matter. Velocity is always tangent to that path. So the question is, what is this velocity over here? Well, what is the basic definition of velocity? Basic definition of velocity is ds over dt, where ds is the differential distance traveled along the path. Now. We can write ds over here as r times a small angle made by this link, right? So if let's say you are here and, and ds amount of time, so ds would be the basic the distance along this, this curve, which is a circular path, and d theta would be the angle made by this, right? So ds is this curved path. We know that ds is equal to r d theta. That's from your high school uh, geometry, okay? So we can substitute this in here and see what we get. So V would be equal to R D theta over DT. R is constant because it's moving along a constant circular path. So V is equal to R times D theta over DT. And that's the velocity of this point. So now what is D theta over DT? D theta over DT is basically the rate at which this angle changes, right? So if let's say this was rotating faster, then this, this angle would be changing faster. And this quantity d theta over dt is actually defined as angular velocity, angular velocity of the object. Now the thing to keep in mind is that angular velocity of the object is actually a property of the object or the rigid body in this case, because every line in this object will be traveling by the same angle in the same amount of time. Okay, so it's not really a property of a particular point on this object. On the other hand, the velocity expression for a point is dependent on how far it is from the origin. So if you're looking at the point P and let's say distance R is given to you, then that's the velocity over here, right? But if you're looking at let's say point Q, which is only halfway, so this is this is from O from O to Q is only halfway R by two, then the velocity of the Q is actually R by two times d theta over dt. Now d theta over dt does not change because even the line OQ in delta dt amount of time will rotate by the same angle d theta, right? So you can see that every line on this, whether you are, you are talking about line OP or OQ, or maybe I can pick another one, let's say this is point R, line OR will also rotate by angle d theta. So the, all the lines are rotating by the same angle in the same amount of time, and that's why d theta over dt does not change. What changes is the distance from the origin, right? So in this case, the velocity of the q would be actually half of velocity of the p, right? So this is the velocity of the p over here. So farther you are from the, from the point of rotation, larger the linear velocity is. So this is what we call linear velocity. Okay, this is linear velocity. And linear velocity is always off a point. You can never talk about linear velocity of an object. You can talk about angular velocity of the object, but you can talk about you can only talk about linear velocity of a particular point. So linear velocity depends on how far you are from the point of rotation. So you have actually kind of experienced it when you are on a merry-go-round, when the merry-go-round is rotating with certain angular velocity, you know, different kids standing in different location will experience different linear velocity. So farther you are from the point of rotation or the axis of rotation, larger is the linear velocity that you will experience. So let's say this is point A, then linear velocity might look like this, the polar point B, and the length is indicating over here basically how what the magnitude of the velocity is, and velocity of C might be here, velocity of D might be here, and if you stand right at the center, then you experience no velocity whatsoever because your R in that case would be zero.
okay so if we have to do a couple of examples we can do that so let's say i have a gear i have a gear and i will not draw the rest of the teeth let's assume that they are there and it's rotating about its center of mass about 0. 0.0 and it's rotating with let's say uh, some angular speed we'll call it five radians per second okay so clearly five radians per second is nothing but this d theta over dt right so you're given d theta over dt equal to five radians per second so that's another thing to keep in mind that whenever you write uh, angular velocity um, it has to be in radians per second it cannot be in degree per second if it is in degree per second given to you then you have to convert into radians per second okay and i assume that everybody knows how to do that so if let's say you are given an angle of uh, uh, let me let me you know do this okay so let's say you are given this as two uh, degrees per second okay so two degrees per second how would you convert that into you know radians so we know that the 360 degree 360 degrees is basically two pi radians right that's two pi radians so one degree would be two pi over 360 radians so two degree would be 2 pi over 360 times 2, right? So that would be what? Um, that would be pi over 90 because 4 over 360 is, 90, is, is uh, 1 over 90. So pi over 90 radians. So if the speed was given to you in degrees per second like this, then you can convert it to radians per second uh, by using this formula, okay? So let's say angular speed is given to you as 5 radians per second. We go back to our you know, original um, example. And we're looking for velocity of, let's say, a point, let's call it this point P, which is at a distance of, uh, let's call it 5 centimeter, okay, from the origin. So, first of all, if this is rotating in, in clockwise direction and the point P is horizontally away from point O, then we know that the point O, the point P is actually going to be traversing a circular path with O as the center and it's, the radius of this circle would be 5 centimeter. And that means that the point P would be going up like this, right? Because it has to be tangent to this path. And the tangent to this path would be this vertical direction. So what is the velocity of the P? So the velocity of the P is defined as the distance, which is R from origin, right? That's 5 centimeter times d theta over dt. So R is 5. So that's 5 into 10 power minus 2 in meters per second. And d theta over dt is 5 radians per second. So that will be 25 into 10 power minus 2, or in other words, 0.25. Uh, meters per second that's the velocity of the point p if i ask for velocity of let's say a point uh, q okay point q is here and this point q is only halfway located that's only 2.5 centimeter from from o then we know that velocity of the q would be equal to the distance r o q times d theta over dt Okay, and at times we will write this as R O Q times omega. So we'll reserve the symbol omega for d theta over dt. And since R O Q is is half of R O P here, this would be nothing but half of velocity of the p, right? So that'll be 0.25 over two meters per second. So it's essentially scale up for you. So velocity, linear velocity of a point is deter is is determined by the the distance from the point to the center of rotation as well as angular speed. Now, we only talked about the linear velocity and how it relates to the angular velocity of an object. What about acceleration, okay? So what about acceleration? So let's go back to our original beam that was rotating about a point, okay? So here is my beam hinged about point O, and here is my point P of interest, okay? We can pick any point, doesn't matter, and this is at distance R. We have seen that if this is rotating in the clockwise direction with angular speed omega, which is d theta over dt, then the velocity of the P would be tangent to this path, and in this case, the path is this circular path about O, okay? So we've seen velocity of P is equal to the distance R times omega, which is nothing but d theta over dt, okay? What about acceleration of the point P? Now, without any proof, I would tell you that the acceleration of the point P has actually two components. So while the velocity is only along tangential direction, the acceleration of the point P actually has two components. One is a component that's along tangential direction, so along tangential direction, I'll call it A sub G. And another one that is actually perpendicular to the tangential direction, pointing towards the center of rotation, which I will call normal direction acceleration. Okay, so without any proof, I will tell you basically what AN is. 
and 80 is actually easy to determine. So if I'm looking for acceleration on tangential direction, all I have to do is take derivative of this, right? So d over dt of vp. Remember, acceleration is defined as rate, rate of change of velocity, right? But velocity itself is a vector. And a vector has both direction and magnitude. We know that as well. So you have direction and magnitude. So which means that a change in direction could give rise to acceleration and also a change in magnitude could give, could give rise to acceleration. So here we are only talking about the change in, in velocity as far as their magnitude is concerned, right? So what is that? So that's d over dt of vp, which we know is r times omega. So that's r times omega, okay? r is constant, so I can take it outside, and this will become d omega over dt. So what is d omega over dt? So that's basically saying the rate at which the angular speed itself is changing, because omega is defined as, omega is defined as angular velocity or angular speed, okay? So, so d omega dt is basically talking about the rate at which angular speed itself changes, and we will call this quantity uh, angular acceleration, we'll write it as alpha. So acceleration along tangential direction is defined as r times alpha, where angle, uh, alpha is angular acceleration, okay? Now keep in mind that this is the acceleration only along tangential direction, okay? We haven't talked about what is acceleration along normal direction. So this is the quantity that I will write without any proof over here. When you take engineering dynamics, you'll actually learn how do we get to that. Uh, if you have any interest, you can you know e email me and I'll tell you what how to get this. Okay, I have a separate video for that. So acceleration along normal direction is actually defined as the velocity of the point divided by the distance. Okay, that's how we define the acceleration along normal direction. So one thing to notice that's very interesting is that um, even if... Uh, alpha is zero, even if uh, angle acceleration is zero, you will still have a non-zero acceleration as long as something is moving because velocity of the particle p, point p is not zero and r is not infinity, so acceleration along normal direction would always exist, okay? So, so keep in mind that as long as something is moving, you will always have a normal direction acceleration. In your high school physics classes, you may have seen this defined as a centripetal acceleration, centripetal acceleration. We don't have to call it centripetal acceleration. Just keep in mind that there are always two components to acceleration, one along tangent direction, other along normal direction, which is perpendicular to the tangent direction. And the normal direction always points towards the center of rotation, not away from it, okay? Now let's do a couple of examples. So example one. So let's say I, we go back to our gear and I will just draw it as a disc now, okay? And it's constrained to rotate about point O and I'm looking for, let's say, acceleration of point P, okay? So I know the distance from O to P, let's say this is five centimeters, and this is rotating with uh, angular velocity omega and angular acceleration alpha. Omega is given to you as, uh, let's say, five radians per second, and alpha, which is angular acceleration, is given as two radians per second square, right? Notice that alpha is defined as d omega over dt, so, so, the, so that means that this unit has to be radians per second per second, which becomes radians per second squared, okay? So first of all, we can compute the velocity of the P, which will be pointing that way, perpendicular to this, that's R times omega, so that's five uh, times five, and this will be in centimeters per second, so that's 25 centimeters per second, that's the velocity of the point P. What is the acceleration of P? Okay, so acceleration of P has two components, one along tangential direction, other along normal direction, right? So along tangential direction, what's the component? So let's call it APT, and this is APN. So APT is equal to R times alpha. So R is five, and alpha is given to you as two, so that would be 10 centimeter per second square. And that's the acceleration along tangential direction. APN, which is the acceleration that comes about due to change in direction of the velocity, is defined as VP square velocity square divided by, by R, and that's 25. Uh, centimeter per second divided by r is 5 so that will be 5 centimeters per second okay so so if you were to you know draw all these velocities and accelerations separately you could do that so i'm going to draw this again so here is my disk here is my point o and here is my point p and i want to show all these velocities and accelerations so i'll i'll, I'll use red pen to write velocity which is 25 centimeter per second and then I'll use blue for acceleration. So this is this is 10, so that would be 10 centimeter 
per second is quite a long tangential direction and towards normal direction is five so that's five centimeter per second square and those are all the vector quantities that you have in this case now let me give you another uh, example so this is an example where i don't have a wheel or a disc or a gear rotating about a fixed point instead i have a wheel actually that's about that's that can basically roll without slipping along a flat plane okay so this is allowed to you know roll let's say it's going to move in this direction so if it's going to move in this direction the velocity of the point o will be non-zero right because the entire thing is translating towards right which means the point o has to have some non-zero velocity so this is clearly a case different from the gears and the wheels that we did over here because the velocity of the point o itself was zero in the previous cases here that's not the case and that's why this is not a pure rotation this is a general planar motion okay so we know the velocity of the point o now if let's say we know the radius of this wheel we can find out what the angular speed is so to find that actually there is one observation that we have to make that observation is that if this is rolling without slipping then the contact point let's call this point to be c the contact point actually has same velocity as the velocity of the surface on which it is rolling okay so velocity of the contact point will be zero in this case because the the surface on which it is rolling is actually stationary so we're assuming that this is a stationary like a road or a flat surface like a table where which is not moving at all so the velocity of actually the contact point is zero okay because this is rolling without slipping now if you allow this wheel to slip while it is rolling then it is not necessary that the contact point will have zero velocity so if you have ever gone bowling you have actually experienced it so when you throw the ball initially the ball may not roll at all in that case it's actually sliding with respect to the surface and that's not a very desirable condition you want it to actually roll freely without slipping but after a while the ball actually may start to roll without slipping in that case the contact point will have actually zero velocity okay so how does it help to find what the angular speed is when the contact point has velo has zero velocity then velocity of the center point and the angular velocity of the wheel have a definite relationship given by this okay so it's almost as if this becomes the point of instantaneous rotation c becomes the point of instantaneous rotation and then you can compute velocity of the point o by relating the r with this angular speed okay so we have this definite relationship and this will be a very useful relationship when you guys start doing your robot design project because most of the robot design project will have wheels in them okay so when you have the wheels and the wheels are rotating with certain angular speed and you want to impart higher velocity to your your uh, robot let's say robotic car then you can increase your r as a result of it right so if you want to have higher speed uh, for your car, you know that your omega, your angular speed coming from the motor is going to be fixed. So that means you can increase your your entire linear velocity of the car by increasing the r. Now, of course, there is a trade-off. You can't increase the r infinitely because after a while you will lose on the torque. Okay, so there is the, this game of the speed and torque that you have to play and find the right balance. Okay. Now, what about acceleration? Well, we can also say something about the acceleration. So let's say the linear acceleration of point O is a zero then a0 would be obtained as r times alpha and that's easy to see because all i have to do is take the derivative on both sides right so if i take derivative on both sides i get d over dt of v0 equal to r is a constant times d omega over dt and that is nothing but acceleration of the center of mass equal to r times alpha which we have seen before okay so knowing the r and knowing the speed angular speed we can find where the linear velocity is knowing the alpha and knowing the r we can find what the linear acceleration is 